the doorbell rings. That annoying ding-dong, normal during the day, but annoying when it wakes me from sleep close to midnight. I dozed off watching what turned out to be a terrible movie. When my wife left for Uber, I had free time. No more kids at home to worry about. I was procrastinating, waiting for my wife to get home from her bachelorette party. I had gotten into the habit of waiting for her. I wanted her to feel uncomfortable sneaking home after the bachelorette party, because things in our house were not the way they should be after 25 years together. With tomorrow being three weeks until our 25th wedding anniversary, it was something to look forward to, a big family celebration, but it wasn't meant to be. My wife turned out to be a cheater. I had no intention of being in her life when that momentous anniversary came. Just yet she didn't know what I knew. We married young, had kids quickly, and were now an empty nester, so there were no kids at home to worry about in the event of a breakup. The thing is, I had no intention of divorcing her. I had every intention of killing her. I found out nine months ago that not only was she cheating with her longtime boss, but she had probably been cheating on me for several years. It just so happens that her boss is my brother Jake. My big handsome brother who was the favorite son in the family. The guy two years older than me. The life and soul of any party and in whose shadow I had lived my entire life. I discovered their betrayal many months ago when she accidentally left her phone open as she left to get ready for a bachelorette party. I picked up her phone to give it to her and pressed a button, really accidentally, which made the screen light up and a WhatsApp message notification appeared with the first few words clearly visible. Why did she have a message from my brother at home? They were together at work most of the day. More disturbingly, the message couldn't have been clearer. Is your pussy ready for... That was all that was quoted in the notification, so I opened up the entire WhatsApp conversation with Jake and was able to see that message and more. Is your pussy ready for me to fuck you tonight? I'll see you at the usual place. I've booked room 245. Just come to the room. See you at 730. Sorry we can't stay the night, but I guess you'll have to go back to your brother's place. The messages were a tape full and there was all the evidence that these two pieces of pond scum had been cheating on me for months. What really pissed me off, even beyond the obvious betrayal, was the way they talked about him providing what I couldn't. My wife joining my brother in mocking and degrading me as a man, a lover, a husband. If my wife was aware of how my feelings for her had cooled over the past few months, she hid it really well. Sure, there were times when she asked if I was okay, when we spent quiet evenings without talking, without touching, without the tender gestures common between husband and wife. I always brushed it off as nothing, hoping it would at least bother her. Apparently, it didn't bother her that our sex life had been seriously curtailed. She probably didn't notice, because from their reports, it appeared that her needs were being met three to four times a week and when you can at work, and every Friday at the bachelorette party. From the reports, it must have been a relief for her, the bitch, to not have to pretend to enjoy sex with me. If she didn't love me anymore, she could have ended our marriage and had sex with whomever she wanted, but instead, she occasionally slept with me like the ultimate whore. I would have preferred a divorce, even though it would have been painful, as I loved her completely before I saw that fateful message. The only exception to our sex life occurred when my brother and his family went to Florida for two weeks. It seemed as the first weekend without him approached, she became more and more enamored. She snuggled up to me with her whole body late at night and early in the morning. I had angrily made love to her twice in those two weeks, but most of the time she was clearly baffled by my lack of interest. I wished I could resist her even more, but not only did I need a little relief myself, but I didn't want to ignore her completely. Then she would realize that I knew she was a cheater. So why didn't I just confront them? Easy. I was working out my plan to kill them. Yeah, you thought I was a doormat for those two piece of shit cheating bastards. No way. I was hoping to avoid a life sentence, but in the end, if that's how the cards played out, 
I'd rather live with that than the pain of betraying my wife and brother. Over the long months, I'd had time to think of literally dozens of plans to end them. Of course, wishing them both dead was a big problem. They were usually only together when they were fornicating, or at work, or a family celebration. How to kill them in a way that wasn't too obvious that I had done it. I thought about paying for the action at a family outing out of town. But that would mean putting innocent people's lives at risk, not least my own, at a family gathering. I pondered whether there was a possible way to use carbon monoxide poisoning as a silent killer. Yes, there have been cases in hotels, but the place they used for their dates was state-of-the-art, using solar power for most heating and electricity needs, so it's not realistic. I thought through so many scenarios and saw the problems in each one, and I started to feel like it was getting harder and harder to be normal around any of them especially when we were all together as a big family. They were just being right, trying not to be too obvious, assuming their audience knew nothing about their affair. But for me, knowing they were cheaters of the worst kind, I saw fleeting glances and gestures, casual touches when they thought no one was looking. Sweet dove, making my rage grow for months, it made me sick to my stomach to realize what a high they were getting from showing each other how much they enjoyed humiliating me, not just from sex, but from all the intimacy they weren't allowed to share together. In my opinion, their actions showed how much they disrespected me and almost certainly hated me. Why they hated me, I had no idea. I had always supported them, although I was a little jealous of my brother, and I had never given my wife a reason to disrespect her, I treated her well in and out of bed. Now I was almost at my wit's end. I had formed my final plan. However stupid it was, I had decided that I was going to expose their fraud and shoot them both and then try my luck with the justice system, hoping to use a reference to temporary insanity— but what stopped me was the realization that I would almost certainly be sentenced to a long prison term, and my own life would be ruined as badly as theirs. Ideally, I would have liked to find a plan that would have allowed me to reveal to them what I knew and have them live for a while in fear of waiting for divorce and the breakup of both families while it was clear in my own mind that I would kill them. I just didn't see a way to accomplish that. I decided to kill them both shortly before our 25th anniversary. It was non-negotiable. I would not celebrate my 25th anniversary with my cheating wife. The anniversary happened to fall on a Saturday, so my final plan was to follow her to her usual Friday night bachelorette party at the hotel, find out what room they were in, then blood would flow, and I would look them both in the eye, killing them. Ding-dong shit, someone's banging on the door. Stupid broad must have forgotten her keys. Coming, I shouted. But when I opened the door instead of my wife, there were two policemen standing there. The older one told me who they were, Officers O'Reilly and Bukowski. And could they please come in? I invited them in, and they looked so serious before O'Reilly spoke. Sir, are you Mr. Richards, Irene Richards's husband? I nodded in affirmation. He continued. Mr. Richards, I'm sorry to inform you that your wife was involved in a fatal car accident this evening. Sir, your brother Jacob was driving the car they were in, and he too lost his life. Before he could add anything, I started giggling like a maniac. I couldn't believe my luck. Not only was I saved from jail, but we had long-term insurance policies, one of which was to pay off the mortgage in the event of death so that the remaining spouse wouldn't be forced to sell the house. Of course, the mortgage was almost paid off, so it wasn't such a big burden to remove, but there was another policy for 500000 Not only would I not go to jail, but I would greatly improve my financial situation. The officers looked at me with concern and asked if they could get someone to be with me in this tragic hour. No, officers, thank you for your concern, but life just did me a favor. These two have been having an affair for over nine months. I spent most of my waking hours trying to figure out how to end it. It's over now, it's natural, officers of justice. I'm fine. In fact, 
I'm going out for a drink to celebrate. Would you like to join me? They, of course, declined being on duty. Not to mention they thought I was a bastard for rejoicing at the death of my wife and brother. And they left, asking me to call the morgue tomorrow morning to make a proper identification. I thought I had acted wisely in not telling them that I planned to kill both of the traitors in less than three weeks. There was no point in provoking complications. I'd already shown my true feelings to the cops, but I'd play devastated husband with my friends and family for a while until I could collect the insurance money to pay off the mortgage and replenish my wallet. I slept like a baby that night and went out the next morning to make sure they hadn't come back to life during the night. When I got to the morgue and I examined both bodies, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife, couldn't get over it and asked that I identify both Jake and Irene. The orderly warned me, gosh, what a mess. And yes, from the looks of them both, it probably happened fast. But oh, how I hoped they had time to realize what was coming next, and that it hurt a lot, no matter how fast. Turns out the driver of the 18-wheeler, had driven too many miles and hours that day, fell asleep at the wheel and ran a red light, running them over, causing their car to fall apart into two separate pieces, and the passengers didn't stand a chance. How freaking sad. Thankfully, no resurrections had occurred overnight. Both corpses remained stone dead, ready for hellfire. Well, in her case, it would make a good cremation. If anyone wants her ashes, please do, otherwise I'll toss them in the nearest dumpster. My problems that I've been struggling with for nine months are solved. I don't need to screw up my future. But in a way, I would have loved to face them before I killed them. But it was still a great deal of luck. I got rid of the bitch, with no repercussions to my future. Gotta love karma. Life goes on. But not for this pair of crooks. I could smile again after nine months of heartbreaking agony. To hell with both of them.